Hello there, Blunder diehard enthusiasts, which isn't to say, you know, people who use Blunder that really like the movie Die Hard, but people that are super into Blunder, hello. Uh, today we are going to be making something I'm calling a technical virus, or basically this is the kind of visual they show whenever there's like, oh, there's a virus in your computer or something like that. We're going to be making it with geometry nodes in a way that we have a bunch of control, etc. So again, the thing we're going to be making, it's going to be this uh, monstrosity, but uh, the nodes are very easy. The controls we have are great, so I can control, first of all, does it displace at all um, and if so how much uh, the speed of that displacement it can be very fast very slow uh, just seed values to get different kinds of animation and then finally the complexity so we can have a turbo virus or something like that uh, but either way, here's how we make it. It's going to be super simple. Don't worry if you haven't touched geometry nodes before. So what you're going to do is a new Blunder project. I'm using 3.0. I think you can use 2.93. It's fine. Uh, whatever you're using, go to geometry nodes, create a geometry nodes tree, and I'm going to call this the virus since that's what it is. And we don't need this cube. Uh, long story short, we're going to make a bunch of nodes that creates this for our geometry output. Uh, the way I started this is with a mesh primitive, uh, specifically the icosphere, which is right here. Uh, you can also just type in icosphere and add it in. This gives us an icosphere of a uh, arbitrary level of divisions, which we're going to be using. Uh, more importantly, we have a list of points that compose this being, uh, you know, this point, this point, this point, and their, you know, X, Y, Z locations. Um, to have this move around randomly, uh, what we're gonna need is first a way to move them. So point translate, this is gonna let us move all the points. It's not the mesh, it's every single point uh, just using the same vector. So to have them move around randomly, uh, let's not use the same vector. We're gonna use an attribute. So every point, different direction. And how do we generate those directions? You're asking, good question attribute randomize we can randomize the direction for each of these uh, specifically i'm going to make a vector a xyz direction for each one of these points i'm just going to call it direction so i'm making a new attribute i'm going to take this i'm going to copy it and now you can see we've generated a random uh, vector direction for each of these and I'm just gonna set the minimum to negative one so that it can go either inwards or outwards. So it can generate any direction of a vector. And we can also, you know, mess around with the magnitude and stuff like that. Um, but okay, you can see we've done a random transformation. Uh, if we play this, you know, nothing happens. We've just kind of frozen this in place. All we have control over is just this randomization. Uh, what, we would, eh. <laughs> what we would like is we'd like each point to now kind of bob up and down in that direction. So kind of like a sine wave controlling the magnitude, but each one going in a different direction. Uh, the way we do this is exactly how I uh, just described it. We're going to take this attribute and process it through some math. So I'm going to take an attribute vector math. I'm using attribute vector math instead of attribute math because we generated a vector. If it was a float, we do something else. So uh, with the vector, I'm gonna calculate the sign of it, let's say, since we want it to trigonometrically go up and down. And I'm gonna take this uh, result and output it here, which is just gonna give us a slightly uh, different result. It's just doing a sign calculation, which is fine. Again, still not animated. The output is still baked in and you can't really change it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and just kind of vary it up a bit before it reaches this sign. Um, in other words, I'm gonna take our direction vector, multiply it by some number, and then apply sine, which means that as we do this, it will kind of evolve and do this kind of sine transformation. Uh, to keep things simple, I'm just gonna put in a single number for this vector. So whatever I put in here, like 0.5, it's gonna be for x, y, and z. So you can see now it's transforming. Uh, to animate this, I'm just going to make a driver, hash frame, so frame 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is just a driver to give you the time or frame number. You take that, you divide it by, uh, you know, how slow you want it to be. So if I want it to be 10 times slower, I put in 10. If I want it to be 100 times slower, I put in 100, right? Uh, you just kind of put the look uh, that you're going for. And I think the final control that we would like for this, because remember, so far, all of this we can build on top of each other, right? More divisions, uh, different uh, seed vector, you know all of that last control we want is to be able to say how big should this uh, displacement or you know point translate be remember all these attributes are just so this can operate uh, well what we can do is we can take this we can multiply it so this is now our final strength slider so if we set it to one nothing happens um, this attribute i'm just going to multiply it by something like i don't know 0. 0.5 this way it will be half as strong and just like before uh, we can make a controller for this so again Zero means do nothing, one means a lot, two means even more than a lot, and something like, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 is what looks uh, best, I think. So let's pick a, a magnitude that I like, 
And let's also make it a bit faster. So only five times slower instead of 10. Okay, we have the kind of standard uh, kind of look now. Um, and all we have to do is make it look virusy, uh, which is just applying a wireframe uh, modifier. Um, and you might be thinking, okay, CG, default cube, whatever I call you. Uh, why did you do all this work in geometry nodes and then apply wireframe as its own modifier? It's because currently wireframe doesn't exist in the mesh operations. I'm sure it will at some point. Uh, but for now, uh, we do a geometry nodes kind of modifier. And then after that's processed, we then apply wireframe. So this is without and this is with. It's just kind of carrying on the chain of operations. And we can, you know, change the thickness, whatever. Uh, but what I'm really interested in is how do we, you know, take this look and, you know, be able to play with it. So a uh, fast thing we can do, group input. This just gives us, I don't know where that just went. Uh, group input, this just lets us control what's going on inside the modifier. So without going into the nodes, uh, I want to be able to control the division level. So you can see now we have an input for that. So boop, 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 fast way to add complexity. Um, that's one thing I want to have control over. And let's also be able to control the speed. So I'm just kind of like outsourcing this to an outside area. And by the way, if you're seeing this flickering every once in a while, like, yeah, it's kind of rare. Um, that's not a geometry nodes issue. That's actually just how the uh, wireframe is calculated. So you'd have to play with some of these settings. I don't know exactly what the right one is, uh, but one of them should prevent some of this flickering. So let's go for something that looks a bit faster. Um, put this on top of a plane just to see what it looks like with a bit of shadow and a bit of cavity. Um, and you can see, uh, this is how I generated the virus really on top, uh, you know, beyond this, I just kind of put it in a scene, maybe colored it a bit, but you know, th this is kind of the standard node setup uh, for making something like this, which kind of looks like the, the way they show like a four dimensional tesseract object, but whatever. Anyways, I feel like that's the essence of the tutorial. We blasted through that one. So, uh, Patreon, let me talk about it. And don't, don't, don't click away. This is important, I think. Uh, so, Patreon, it exists. There's a link in the description. What you're looking at right now is nearly 750 uh, people that think Patreon is worth it. And it might be worth it for you. Why? Uh, because blend files. This blend file, any blend file I've ever uploaded for the last two years, uh, you can get immediate access to. You can download them. You can use them. You can play with them. You can make your own projects with them. Um, all the blends exist over there. Early access to tutorials. I've been crazy this week. Uh, so far, I think I'm like five days ahead of schedule. Uh, so you can watch tutorials sometimes five days before they even come out. So early access, that exists. Um, exclusive tutorials, I make that every once in a while. So that's for neither CG Matter or Default Cube viewers, but just for patrons. Um, all of this, all those perks, benefits, whatever, uh, they're over there. Uh, but also, if you just want to uh, support what I do in this uh, free tutorial making world, that's a little hard to survive in because you're giving away stuff for free all the time. Uh, if you want to support that endeavor, Patreon is also the place to do it. I appreciate any reason, any motive, any wh whatever brings you there is fine. Um, Link in the description. Hopefully you learned something about making this tech virus with the geometry nodes and uh, go infect uh, people with some 3D scenes. Uh, that's it for me. See ya.